first is welcome Sherry, Sharon Parsons. Um, we're so glad to have you on the committee. Sherry has a lot of knowledge of the town and the history of the town. So she's a great, great person to represent the Hadley um, Historical Commission. And um, Denise Barstow Manns had resigned from the Historical Commission. So she that meant she's no longer on our committee as well. So we're glad to have Sharon. Sherry, one thing we've often done with a new person, just so you can meet who's on the committee, is just a quick go around with people can introduce themselves, um, say which committee or board or authority or at large they're on, and if they want to say how long they've been on the CPA or anything else like that, they can. So um, you know me, I'm Mary Thayer. I'm um, <laughs> one of the at large. I've been on here a little over four, about four and a half years. Um, Risa? Yes, I'm Risa Smith-Breed, and I serve on the Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. And I've been, I guess this is my second year, isn't it, Mary? Sounds right. I, yeah. Andy Morris-Friedman? Hi, welcome to CPA. Uh, I'm Andy Morris-Friedman. I'm at large. Uh, I'm a former chair of the committee, and I think it's been 12 years where does the time go? Let's see, Adam. Hi there, I'm Adam Bergalt. Um, I'm an at-large member um, and I haven't even been on the committee for a full year yet. So I'm still only a few months in. And, Mark, and Adam's our treasurer. Mark? I wasn't sure if I could say that because I, I thought we still had to do the official election <laughs> okay well wait you yeah <laughs> um mark uh mark dunn i'm on because of my membership on the planning board and i don't know what's it been four years maybe sounds uh, right yeah yeah right after i did and andy hi i'm andy klopaki i am um uh, this is my second tour with the uh, CPA committee. I was on it for years with the Park and Rec Commission, and now I am representing the Adley's Finance Committee. Great. Um, Sherry, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sherry Parsons, uh, um, or Sharon Parsons, depends upon how you happen to know me. Um, Sherry's fine. That's what my family calls me anyway, and church. Um, I taught at Hopkins Academy for 25 years. I taught social studies um, and taught altogether for 38 years. Um, retired 10 years ago. I still work, however, up scoring teacher certification tests and um, love history. Grew up thinking that if I could live in a previous time, I would love to do that. Thank you. And we've got Diane. Um, do you, we're just introducing ourselves, Diane, with how long we've been on the committee and, and you're muted still. I know there's talking on the boat, so sorry. Happy to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you. Diane's from the Park and Rec. Yeah. Great. Um, all right. So we have minutes from March 4th. Hopefully everyone had a chance to, to um, read them over. I didn't forget anyone, did I? For no, I think we're all set. Um, oh, Kayla, I should, Kayla's important to meet too, Sharon. Where's Kayla here? Hi, I'm Kayla. I'm the um, staff person for the CPC. I also work for the Conservation Commission Planning Board in, in ZBA, and I've, I've been around since almost a year now working for the CPC. I'm so glad to have you. Yeah, I don't know why I'm called the uh, secretary when Kayla pulls all the weight. You have the legal responsibility. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I get the liability. Okay, great. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the March 4th minutes? I would make a motion. Second, anyone? I think Riza is doing it, but she's muted. Okay. All right. Risa, second? Yeah, second. Any discussion? Second. Um, 
Kayla, do you want to do a roll call? Well, uh, can we, um, is there any discussion? I said it very quickly, so I oh, okay. didn't give much chance. I, I had a question for Andy that might, uh, I thought, what was the name of your uh, state level steering committee? Uh, I think it was item 12, just called it the steering committee. But it was, wasn't there a long name for? CPA Coalition Steering Committee. CPA Coalition Steering Committee. Yeah. I, I, I think that would be informative if we could add that, you know, expand item 12 to just call it that. Great. EP, CPA. Coalition. Coalition Steering Committee. Okay. Yeah, I can update that. Because I'm on the Smart Growth Steering Committee. And just steering committee could be too broad. Good idea. Any other discussion? Kayla, do you want to call the vote? Okay, roll, roll call vote. Mary? Yes. Risa? Yes. Andy Morris Friedman? Yes. Sharon? I'll abstain since I wasn't present at the meeting. Adam? Yes. Andy Klopaki? Yes. Mark Dunn? Aye, yes. And Diane? Yeah. Great, thank you. Treasurer's report, Adam, and I can. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Um, Let me share the screen. Yeah, I'll just wait till, wait till it's up. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, I'm seeing thumbs up. All right. <clears throat> Let me go up to the beginning. Yes, and thank over you. to the side. Yeah. So we're gonna talk. Uh, I'll go through first what we have available in our reserves, um, as of the updated uh, financial reports we received from the accountant. Um, so uh, in our open space reserve, we have seventy nine thousand three hundred dollars. Um, in our, we have z nothing available in our historic reserve as of right now. In our housing reserve, we have $308,339. Um, we have in our, our fund reserve, the money we're trying not to utilize, we have 500,000. That's money we're trying not to, not to have to use. We're always trying to make sure we have $500,000 set aside um, that we don't have to tap into. And then in our undesignated fund balance, we have $1,471,686. Um, that subtotal is $2,359,325. And then reserve for upcoming expenditures, um, we have $762,801. Um, and that total is, is our total CPA fund, which is $3,122,000. $126. Um, scrolling down, if we're looking uh, at our revenue ledger, um, which is starting in um, row 17, um, for 2024, our, the CPA surcharge that we got from the town was $347,332. The state uh, Distribution was 175,606, which was a 53% match. Um, still better than most towns uh, get, um, but not as not as good as previous years. Um, that subtotal is $522,938. Um, our earnings on investment were 79,305, and the total is 602,243. Um, so those are our updated numbers um, as of 2024. Um, Mary, you didn't want to talk about our estimates for uh, 2025, correct? At least not right now. Right, I think what you did is great. The only thing I would add is that um, Hopkins borrowing on top yes. of the, for the 750,000, as of 6.30, it was 427,000 had been already spent of that. It's now about 544,000. Um, so there's still over 200,000 left um, for, for bills coming in from the from the fields. 
So that's, that's, right. that's an addition to what we're seeing here. Yeah. Any we, questions uh, on that for right now? We'll come back to this as we talk about clawbacks yeah. and potential projects, but um, we certainly have some funds available. Any other? All right. About that. Good. Thank you, Adam. No problem. Um, oh, I saw it. looks like Andy might have had a question. Yeah, Andy. one quick question is that, that Hopkins information, is there some way, I mean, especially given the size of it relative to everything else, but uh, is there a way to incorporate that into, um, you know, as a pending expenditure or? That's why we had listed it down underneath. Um, it, we'll be talking about it in a little bit because um, Linda Sanderson is going to come on and we can talk about how we're going to pay back that borrowing. Mm -hmm. And because we have funds available, one option is to pay it, you know, shortly. So it'll be it'll be reflected very quickly in our regular figures. Um, it's. It, it is on top of what's available now, but it's still an obligation that the committee has. So we certainly didn't want to forget about it. Mm -hmm. Or the CPA fund has. Moving thank on. you, Adam. Oh, go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say thank you, Adam, for that. It's always a little daunting, all those numbers. Yeah, for sure. I'm still wrapping my head around it. So if anybody has questions, please let me know because it'll be a learning experience for me too. I think it was so daunting that my my iMac connection dropped out. So <laughs> now I'm on my iPad. So if I seem to just swing from side to side, that's crazy camera. <laughs> Um, next we have, since it's September and we've got new members, the year starts again. Um, it's time to elect chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. Currently the slate is I'm chair, Andy Morris Friedman is vice chair, um, secretary is Mark, and treasurer is Adam. Um, before we ask if anyone's interested in those positions, is everyone that's currently serving willing to be, continue on? Um, Andy, would... go ahead, Andy. You're, You're muted, muted, Andy. If only that happened at town meeting. Um, I'm happy to continue serving as vice chair, um, but I would suggest that maybe one of the new people would want to be vice chair, and you get to help Mary and uh, learn a lot. So, so think about it, and I'm I'm happy to not be vice chair again if a new person wants to try it. And it's not that much work. Mary does all the work. Adam? I'm I'm happy to continue as the treasurer. I just started, so it'd be a little silly to stop <laughs> now. But um, if somebody has a desperate bid for it, I guess I won't fight you. <laughs> Mark, are you? Yeah, I will continue to plead and bribe anyone who would like to be the secretary. It's uh, it's quite a burden since Kayla does all the work. <laughs> does anyone else on the um, CPC wish to be any of those positions? Don't all speak up at once. Just want to make sure everyone has a chance. Um, would somebody, therefore, would somebody like to make a motion to um, elect the slate of officers as Mary Thayer Chair, Andy Morris Friedman Vice Chair, Adam Secretary, Adam Treasurer, and Mark Secretary. I mean Can... that we adopt the slate as Mary just articulated. I don't think I can motion or second if I'm running. Second. Okay, thank you. Was that that was that Diane or Sherry? Was that Thanks. Oh, Sherry. Sherry. All right. Um, I'll call just, vote or any discussion, sorry. I just, you know, I I just want to shout out to Andy Morris Friedman as he gets a lot of emails from me saying, what do you think about this? And also he's been the main one to help people with applications, which is huge to be able to respond right back and help people with questions. And so I really appreciate that. And Adam's done great. We've spent a bit of time together going through this stuff and 
he's jumping in tackling it, which is great. So appreciate that. Well, can I make a motion that Mary be chair forever? <laughs> that doesn't work. I'll, I'll second that one. <laughs> well, how about as long as she wants? How about that? There you go. Yeah, for anyone. And I'm happy that Andy is a elastic boy that when a previous administration flicked him off, he bounced back. Where would we be without you, Andy? Oh, shucks. My head is swelling. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, let's vote. Yeah. Kayla. Um, roll call vote, Mary Thayer? Yes. Risa? Yes. Andy Morris Friedman? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Adam? Yes. Andy Klopaki? Yes. Mark? Yes. And Diane? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, we're on to our applications. Um, we're going to start with, I think, the quick one, which is um, the Hadley Historical Commission. So, Diana, would you like to talk about what you have and what your committee has in mind? All right, I'm actually going to pass it over to Brianna Quinn as she was the main author on the application. Hi, everybody. I'm Hi, Brianna. Brianna. Um, so, we applied for a preservation plan summary. And we would be working with um, historical consultant, Chris Skelly on this. My service is kind of spotty, so I apologize if I get cut off at all. Um, and I'm not sure if you all had time to go over our application or not, or what questions you may have about it. Can you give just a quick summary of what the, what the study would be. It's so nice to see a study for only $2,000, but um, I'm just curious what, what $2,000 really gets you. Sure, so um, we as a commission had met with Chris earlier this year and kind of gone over our options um, in terms of working with him and the preservation plan summary seemed like the most affordable and most ideal option at this time. Basically, Basically, we would have a meeting in person with him to discuss what our goals are and um, where our positives are as a commission, where our negatives are as a commission, what action items we need to identify in order to move forward with the goals that we have currently set as a commission. And then we would do a day-wide tour with him, go around the town, look at all of our resources, kind of catalog those resources, and then meet back up at the end of the day and have several following meetings with him about um, the tour and things that he had identified and our goals as a commission. And then he will essentially draw up a report that will then be sent to us, which we can then forward publicly to the town or whoever is interested in it. Um, and it will help us identify the items that we can work on as a commission. And we felt that it was a significantly more affordable cost than a true preservation plan at this time. Nice. Do people Does on anyone have any PC any more questions? And you know, I have visions in my head about all the resources that are out there. So I'm just <laughs> curious as to, you know, with all the historic buildings that we have and then historic locations and site markers, things like that. Maybe if we had a better sense of I, I, if it's all spelled out in the application, I apologize. Um, is there like a preliminary list that you, you have in mind or um, that be open for um, additional public comment? Well, we have, yes, yeah, we have the, um, the macros available to, oh, sorry, sorry if I'm interrupting you, my service is kind of going in and out. Um, we have the list that we currently have on macros to kind of go off of, but we were hoping that Chris would be able to put together kind of a list that we don't currently have available. We have macros, but we feel that we don't have um, kind of a rounded out more extensive list of all of the historical resources that are available to us in Hadley. So that's part of the goal of this preservation plan right? would be to kind of make a list that encompasses everything. 
We are open for suggestions if you want to email us. Andy, I saw that you had you a question, I think. Sure. Um, is the tour open to the public or is it just for the commission? I think, hi, this is Diana. I think that um, technically we would have to open it to the public because we would have to comply with open meeting laws, which would require our meeting to be open to the public as when we have a quorum, we have to comply with those laws. Um, I I think it won't be something we would want loads of people at, not to discourage anyone to come. If you're interested, we'd love to have you just um, in terms of efficiency. Uh, I think this is mainly geared towards current commission members. Is Mary, can I just interrupt so I can give you good news? Yes. If, if it's a tour with your committee, you can have a quorum. You don't need to post it. If it's just a tour, you just can't do any deliberating during during the tour. Ah, see, that's that's my concern <laughs> that deliberating might ha just happen on the fly. So in that case, I would like to post it as a meeting just to make sure we are in compliance with open meeting law. But thank you, Carolyn. That's very helpful. Okay. Because I think uh, I certainly would want to go on it. Um, and I think it's a great way to build support and publicity for this project and greater projects in the future. So I would encourage you to uh, invite the history lovers. Uh, I guess my other question is, um, why just do a summary? Why not just uh, pony up the money and uh, do the whole plan? So... The whole plan would cost upwards of $40,000. And we would really want to work with town leadership to uh, make sure that we are all working together on the that goal. And also that process would probably require us to put out an RFP, make sure we're getting bids, make sure we are going through um, picking the right consultant for a project of that magnitude. And this summary instead will really provide us with a roadmap of what we need to do next. Uh, and perhaps it'll tell us that a full preservation plan is what we need to do next, or it'll tell us that we need to work on a demolition delay bylaw or a local historic district or other historic preservation uh, bylaws. So this, we wanna start here because we're just, we're not at the point in terms of um, our relationship building to do a full preservation plan. Okay, so this is just like, first part of a longer process yes okay and yeah. and i can imagine that you know because of public procurement you know so under ten thousand, you can as long as you follow good business practices you can choose whoever you want so you'd feel more comfortable instead of just getting some low bidder yeah correct yeah i think um, this is a great project i've been trying to get something like this done for years and uh i i support it totally thank you so let me just i should have prefaced this by saying just a reminder we are not voting on recommending or not recommending the applications today at all this is right. a discussion yeah. this is for us to mm -hmm. ask questions think about answers if we need you to come back with you know if we ask questions you need time to figure out the answers to and then at our next meeting on September 16th is when we'll vote to recommend it going forward to town meeting or not. So just to- So I, I do have a question because Andy brought up a very good point in that if we do open it to the water public, we get that great response. Should we be considering asking you guys for a little bit more money to perhaps cover a bus to carry all of those people around town? Hmm buses that seems kind of problematic in terms of approved use okay carpool all right <laughs> and i think you're very optimistic or, or bicycle <laughs> bicycle <laughs> andy's too. gotten me very optimistic there's a lot of people in town who love local history and i don't think you'll have a problem very good any other comments or questions at this point Diana, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's really more of an uh, information or fact-finding tour more than it's a historical tour. Am I correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Right, but there's yes, a lot. 
there's a lot of people who know a lot of stuff about the history of this town. You know, have you considered this? Have you been here? Have you thought of that? You know, oh, we did that 25 years ago. You know, people know a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seems to me this is kind of a way to hire a professional to help your committee look at how best to use your resources and go forward. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Who just I raised their hand? Andy Klopacki had a question. Well, I was just going to uh, tag on to the same comments, which was, if, you know, if you put it out there in advance, you could get some of that information taken care of. Obviously, your focus would be on efficiency if you're trying to do this in one day. Um, and you could get sidetracked at, a, at signposts all over the town. So in order to build your route and, and make it efficient, you know, you certainly you have to balance how much open you want it to the public versus setting an itinerary and sticking to it. Um, because certainly, uh, you know, mission creep could take that day up really rather quickly. So that was part of the, you know, thinking behind uh, putting out the list early and seeing if people want to contribute up front. Um, but, you know, not everybody's online, not everybody's paying attention to this stuff, but, um, you know, obviously, you got to, I would be concerned with scope creep um, if you're trying to do it at this at this budget level or if you're going to go bigger, then we should uh, look at the proposal again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else for the Historical Commission? Uh, the, oh, Diana, would you please, while you're here, um, mm -hmm. you were somebody on, on the committee, just I know you, we, you were here not too long ago with your project that had three phases. And if you could just do a quick update on each phase, um, that would be great. Definitely. So the three phases of the project that we received funding from the CPA for previously were to put up four historical information signs. And I'm happy to report that the signs are now installed. Big thank you to Dan Ragish for volunteering his time and his talents to install those for us. And I invite all of you to join us for an unveiling of the one on the common uh, next week on Thursday, September 5th at six o'clock. And then the next one is updating the West Street walking tour. So we are very close to finishing that. We are circulating a proof right now of it uh, to finalize that before we go to print. We were a, lit, a bit held back because we were getting approvals from Margaret Atwood and Holly Hobby as we use excerpts from both of their works in the tour. We have now gotten all of our approvals, so we are very close to print. And then the last phase is an audio driving tour. And uh, Brianna has been in touch with Alex at Hadley Media, and they are getting very close to recording that. And so hopefully we will have a demo soon and be able to release that in the next couple months. That's really exciting. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. And Mark? Um, could you refresh? I, I kind of in the back of my mind thought I might have seen something in this submission, but I'm not seeing it as I scan right now. Do you refresh us um, what attracted you to um, Skell, uh, to Chris Skelly? Yes, so Mr. Skelly is formerly an employee of the Massachusetts Historical Commission. So he has decades of experience working with uh, town historical commissions on these projects. Uh, he is also local. He lives up in Franklin County. So um, that's a really great connection. And uh, we were also very happy with his um, nominal fees uh, when he met with us back in March. Very flexible, uh, worked really well with us. And uh, we've just been very impressed with his work so far. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like maybe you had a cover letter or something that said that. That sounds familiar. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good question. All right. Well, thank you, Historical Commission. You're obviously welcome to stay and you're welcome to not, depending on what <laughs> you'd like to do. But um, we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks on September 16th, and we'll, we'll vote, on, vote on the project at that point. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, next, we have the Hadley... Uh, let me just interrupt. Carolyn, are you okay if we put the Hadley Elementary School next and then we'll talk about Goodwin or are you? No, nope, I'm fine. Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead. Very good. 
So we have this big project at the um, Hadley Elementary School and thank you for all the detail in your application. Um, it's, it's quite a big project. So Tara or whoever would like to address that. And we've, we're glad to have so many people here from the, for the project. Thank you for the school committee and the other people that are here um, as well. So hi, I'm Tara Brueger. Um, I'm a resident um, of Hadley and um, my children attend the Hadley Public Schools as well. And I also serve on the school committee on my third term with the school committee. Um, and just to quickly address, so you know who's on the call as well. So Dr. Annie McKenzie, our um, superintendent is here. Krista Jardins, our business manager is here. Um, Ms. Dowd um, is our AGS principal that is present as well. Um, and we have members of our local Hadley PTO, um, as well as the Friends of Hadley Preschool, um, who is a nonprofit that supports the um, preschool program at Hadley Elementary. So just to, to say that they're all in here um, of support of um, the project and what we've done so far, um, they've been elemental. All these people have been elemental to keeping the project move forward. Um, so I'll try to be brief. I tend to be wordy, so I will try my best to be brief here. Um, so we quickly realized that this project became more of an urgency as the school year went on last year and parts of the large um, the older kid playground, grades one through six, that larger playground, um, became unsafe in um, one portion in particular of it. Um, and so while it was in the works, a few people had started talking, talk, ugh, talking about replacing um, the smaller playground. It quickly shifted real quick into, um, okay, well, we need to be looking at both playgrounds. Our big kid playground is is falling apart before us um, and caution tape, cardboard, whatever you want that will stop those darn children from um, going into the areas that are no longer safe. And we also had um, biweekly inspections done um, by the town to make sure that it was still safe for kids to utilize as well. Um, and so we also quickly realized that it's a pretty um, expensive project to complete. We were able to do a lot of front loading with um, the actual structures themselves through fundraising. Um, so the school, we are utilizing um, $100,000 from our school of choice um, funding. We were able to allocate that fund. Um, and as you see in here, we've got other various large donors. And that is kind of the, the first part of the project would be to get those um, to get those new structures placed. Um, and when we first started talking about it, we started talking about changing our surfacing. Um, wood chips are um, messy, hard to maintain, um, can cause injury. They shift um, in a lot of different ways as kids come off of the slides, as they run on them. Um, if they fall, they can get injured. Um, some in the preschool and maybe even kindergarten might say to you, children like to pick them up and may put them in their mouth or, or throw them at other people. Um, so, so it quickly started this discussion of changing the surfacing of the playground to make it um, more accommodating to our children. Um, make it safer for all of our children to be able to utilize um, the the surfacing that we're looking into is the port in place rubber surfacing. So it, once it's placed, there's a whole process around how that's placed. Once it's placed, it will not shift um, as a kid goes down the slide. If they're on a swing, it will not move as they go up the swing or as they run. Um, kids obviously won't be able to eat or throw them. Um, it also makes the entire um, play area um, accessible to everybody, which is now actually not possible um, right now with what we have. So the new playground will um, meet ADA requirements, and then this would just make it easier to access all areas of the playground instead of just certain portions of the playground itself. Um, so that's what we started looking into this and we very quickly realized, well, we can raise enough money and have enough on hand in order to get the structure portion of it, but we would need assistance, um, 
for getting the surfacing done. As you can see, um, it's quite pricey. Now, the amount that I have in there, um, I did list the 290. Um, we, we have not hired a contractor. We don't want to hire somebody to then not have the funds in place and then have to um, I have to go back. So um, th this is an estimate. We were able to get um, an estimate from the current um, vendor that we're using for the actual structures. We were able to get um, an estimate for site prep for um, for the um, prep underneath where the poured, uh, poured surfacing would go. Um, that needs to have a certain requirement before that's in place. Um, as well. So we got our best guess estimates on that. The number uh, the number may change slightly. Um, we would go out to bid and find a contractor that um, was most cost effective that met our needs that you know the safety and requirements they're looking for. Um, but we would also go out to bid to find that. So um, that might shift, but this is I feel this is a pretty darn good estimate given that we've gotten um, quotes from people. This is what they, this is what they do. So the premier park and play who's doing the playground gave us a quote on what it costs to do the surfacing um, Valley excavating, as you can see in the um, packet that we put together was gracious enough to put together an estimate of now, of course, that would be what they charge. Um, so again, we would, we would get quotes for that as well. Um, so real, the reasoning um, for looking at this as close to the playground getting put in, um, there's a couple of different reasons. Um, one, we actually just had a lot of time um, and hours donated by a local contractor to get the site ready just for um, the playground surfacing to be placed. So with the prior wood chips, they took out almost two feet of wood chips um, from just the big kid playground. Um, and so what happens, it, I don't have to explain this, you all know, but um, it starts to degrade. And so it becomes just unstable surfacing, um, allowing for the compaction that we have. And then the rubber surfacing does allow it to stay more stable as well. Um, so we've done a lot of prep work in there to get it ready. We've had to add a lot of gravel and surfacing now. Um, and I think one of the reasons we wouldn't want to wait any longer um, to get it done if possible is because we're right at the beginning of this. We would have to do minimal amount of additional work to get it ready for the poured rubber as opposed to waiting a few years or whatnot, then we may have to do more prep work ahead of time. So we've already got a surface that's added quite a bit of gravel in place and what other compact material they needed. We need just minimal amount now um, to get it ready for the poured concrete. Uh, poured, I do this all the time. I keep saying poured concrete when I talk to everybody, it's so terrible and I mean the poured rubber. Um, so, um, I don't know if there's any questions that you have for me. Maybe it's if there's something as you read through the application, you have a question. Um, I'll do my best to answer what I can. Um, and of course, I'll get you answers for whatnot. We did include local area playgrounds that also have that surfacing to give you the idea. We did include renderings of um, both of our uh, playgrounds of what they will look like. And those are the actual um, renderings, I think, honestly, first seen besides on the school committee here with CPA. Um, so, and that is the color scheme as well. Um, and then we've included kind of the, the Google Maps area view of where this would be as well. So the two playgrounds, and then we will have a um, we will have a swing set area that's going to be installed and that is over um, by where the park and rec sheds are kind of behind the school there. There's um, a monkey bar play area and a field back um, in the north um, northeast corner of the school there out by the field. So that's there. We've included the quotes um, for both um, the structures that we're doing right now, um, any donations that have been made to date um, as well, and then uh, the estimates as well um, for what we anticipate the cost to be. Um, one last thing I did include, um, we did get, again, we've got actually Karina is on the meeting as well. She's the 
president of the Friends of Hadley Preschool and her support, as well as um, Principal Dowd. And then lastly, the last thing in our packet, um, I find it amusing and I hope you had time to read it. And if you don't, please take the time. It's really quite endearing. Um, so the, the absolute last page is notes from some of our HES students. So when we were looking to fundraise money, our wonderful principal um, put out a survey to students um, and asked teachers to get some quotes for their students. And we included these in donor packets as we were looking to fundraise money. Um, and actually, if you have it in color, the one in red, if I may read it real quick, was actually quoted in the Gazette article that came out. Um, and it cracks me up every time I read it, but these students, it's so sweet. And so this one fifth- Is right, that the rusty, dusty, and musty? Yeah. Yes, I don't even I have it. to read it to you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every time I read it and I had to tell his mother, I was like, oh my God, can we please quote this child for the Gazette? <laughs> 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 um, but they're all really excited. Um, everybody in our community is excited. And as you can see, we've got support on the meeting here as well. Um, we are really um, astounded um, and um, so very grateful at the community support that we've had thus far for the actual structures. Um, we were able to raise quite a bit of money in, in just a short amount of time, which is really just honestly, it's, it's amazing. It's flooring. And, you know, Hadley, our district is fantastic. We have a lot of wonderful supporting staff and administration and parents. Um, and the town of Hadley is fantastic. Um, and you realize that as you start talking to other residents in other towns, just how supportive of a town we have. So um, hence, we bring this over to you um, for the request. I'll stop talking and allow you to ask me any questions. Thank you very much, Tara. Questions? So it's, 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 Sherry. What is the lifespan of this um, board in place forever? Uh, so the lifespan, um, since it's still somewhat fairly new in our area, can go, they say, up to 20 years. Now, the warranty, depending on which company you choose to um, invest with, can vary. Um, I've seen them about, so the actual warranty for the product, 10 years. Um, but then lifespan is, is longer, so 20 years. Um, our current playground, so our building, HES was built in 96. Current playground, and Sharon, you might know this better than me, went up a year or two later um, from the building being built. Um, so with the way things are built these days, I would almost expect the flooring to last a little bit longer than the structure itself, um, but I would at least expect it to last the length of the structure. Mark, did you have comment? Uh, uh, I was just trying to remember. I think it said that you were planning to erect the new one by the end of September. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I look, we look out our kitchen window at that. So we cried when it went away and my stepkids didn't go to Hadley schools, but they played on that, yeah. you know, after hours. And so they were very sad to see it go. Yeah. So I have a question. Hi, Reese. Um, I always think about things from a health and nursing perspective, because that's my professional history. What kind of rubber is this? And I'm asking because so many children have latex rubber allergies so that is a good question and so i believe it's a recycled rubber and i'm looking i have a couple of different websites up right now that if they tell me the surfacing um i, I my gut um as i am in the healthcare field um as well would tell me that they would not be silly enough. Um, to, oh, to I don't know, Tara. You and I have both seen. I know, right? Shall, shall you dare ask? Um, and I'm looking to see if I can find the um, the answer from any of these websites real quick. But that might actually require a phone call. It's a fantastic question. 
Um, and I would actually inquire with several of these companies to find out if they're latex free, unless somebody here already knows the answer to that. And that's fine to report back September 16th, Tara. Okay, great. Yeah, that would be interesting to get a, a list of uh, potential allergens and also any toxins. Like w w whenever you think of rubber or plastic, vinyl, you think of like BPA or uh, what are the other things that, you know, things that we didn't know and then ended up being a thorn in our side. Right. I'll, I'll add to that, uh, uh, just piggyback on what Mark was saying. Uh, some of these products have friability and uh, can be disseminated into the air and breathed in. I would like to see, you know, some safety studies on that. They should have it in their engineering specs. Yeah. I'll get that for you. I'm sure they do. Thank you. Were you able to talk with anyone, say, at Jessica's Playground that's been around for over a decade to see how any issues they've had or how theirs has been holding up? So I did reach out um, and I was actually um, given to, let me look at his title, the Directors of Building and Grounds at the Belchertown Public Schools. Um, and I asked him just a few random questions that felt pertinent. Um, and I took it and I, and I kind of, um, extrapolated what it would mean for our area. So that, that playground was built in 2014. Um, and I did ask how long it had been in place, but then I, I looked it up myself. Um, he says eight to 10 years. So it's been 10 years now that it's been in place. Um, and I did ask him, um, how often he needed to do repair, um, and, um, did he have any concerns over that? Um, and I think that he said, um, I'm trying to read real quick. Um, he said that, yeah. the, um, the surface can tear okay. and need patches, yeah. um, in high use areas. Um, and so I looked at that. Um, so first off they're 10 years in right now, um, and they still have the same surface there. Um, I did talk to at Groff Park and they can patch it. Um, but I also look at those and there's no, there's no count studies. So I don't think that anybody is keeping track of kind of the, the foot traffic at either of these, although I can ask to be sure, but I, especially at Belchertown schools, um, the foot traffic, I, I think is much higher at, at both areas. I know Jessica's Boundless Playground, even when it just opened up, was attracting children because it was one of a kind in the area when it was built um we frequented it quite a bit um when my son was younger um and it's always busy there's always people there um same thing with um groff park but i do know that groff park is a less easy comparison because they had actual water troubles at their park so i don't know they're a, a, a very useful comparison so 10 years in place they've had to do a little bit of wear and tear repairs um, I did ask him, um, if you had the opportunity to do this all over again, would you use the same surface? And I haven't heard back yet. So I would be curious to what he says. Thank you. Well, it's Groff Park is beautiful. I took my granddaughter there a little while ago and it was a very, very hot day. One of these hot 90 plus days. And um, I will say the surface was so hot. You had to, you could not be on it in bare feet, but I think that's probably true of most surfaces on a day like that. Um, but it is, it is beautiful and it, you know, it seems like it would help if people fall not to be hurt as much. Um, and I will just tell you too, um, we, in there is no formal plan. This is the, the, the fundraising committee's plan is to really look into seeing if we would be able to provide, um, shade over the structures themselves as well, which would also, um, help the longevity of the surface as well as the structure itself um, and the children. <laughs> um, so all three. So that is something we're looking into. Um, it is, you know, a small group of us. So we're, we're pulled in a lot of different directions. So I'm, we're taking it, you know, kind of a stepwise approach to where we get that, but that is on our minds as well. And I think Chris Desjardins has his hand up as well. Um, Chris, I can't see your hand. So. Oh, 
Yeah. It's actually under, I, I'm sitting here with my wife and I couldn't raise mine on my computer. So I jumped on hers. Okay. Ellie Charlene, but uh, okay. I, I just wanted to mention, I, I did look up what the rubber surfacing is made of and it's, it's made primarily of recycled tires. Um, so I don't think there's latex in tires, um, but you know, just to let you know that that's the primary material of the surfacing. Do you have a sense of, I, I mean, the, the price tag is huge. I mean, that's something I think is the, the um, hardest part to get through town meeting is just the size of the, the price tag. I mean, have you looked at just in comparison what other surfaces might cost? I mean, it's looking at maintenance as well as initial cost, but um, that might, that might be asked, you know, if it was, rubber pellets versus wood chips and rubber pellets can kids can eat and throw at each other too and they get really messy um but it's i think rubber pellets are actually quite expensive as well but i you know this this is um a big a big amount and i think those are the two is the problem and i there might even be more concerns about using a rubber pellet versus a wood chip um to be honest, at least I, I think I would have more concerns just just speaking for myself um, because it at least wouldn't break down quite as easily. It would get lodged a little bit more. Um, and um, so that that would be that would be one. Um, and the only other thing they have is instead of a solid surface, they have them in tile pieces. So it will be the same material, but in tiles, which um, may end up being a little bit, um, I, I don't know if that would be more cost effective or more expensive. Um, I didn't look into the tiles, um, but it's again, the same material. Um, so I don't know if it would be more, more advantageous one way or the other, but besides that in sheer concrete and wood chips, um, the only other thing they have is the, the kind of like the fake grass, which I don't think they put on playgrounds. I think those are the only surfaces they utilize. Well, this is a wonderful project for Hadley and for the school and, and the whole playground area. And my my kids were in school when the last one was put in. They they were first ones in the school when it was built. And now I have grandchildren about to do that. So it's it's fun to you know, a generation later, it's it's about time. Um other CPC committee questions or comments? Andy I know the CPA has put some other money into uh, that area, like uh, the um, the uh, um, pavilion. Not, not the, the pavilion, thank you. Yeah, that area as well. So CPA does have a history of supporting that, that, uh, that part of the community. And as well as, you know, playgrounds and the like up at uh, Zaturka Park. Yeah. I'm going to have to do a little offline research when we were, I know when uh, the Park and Rec Commission was looking into uh, the um, ground surface, play surface up there around that area. Uh, this was years ago, of course. And, you, you know, it, you're all right. That was very, uh, the, the most expensive part of it was how do we um, protect the kids against uh, gravity there? And uh, I'm trying to flood that area with with uh, either the rubber pellets or these rubber chips, uh, we're all very expensive propositions. But you know, sometimes you get what you pay for. I, I would just like to jump in and and add thank you so much. I, I'd like to thank Tara for putting the application together and and really, you know, the families that have come to this meeting for advocating for the completion of this project. Um, the matting that we are going to be putting down in the meantime for it to be ADA compliant will only be in a small section. And so it's really important for our families and for our students and for community members to be able to have full access to both the, the preschool playground and also the big play structure. Um, the play structure is being de um, delivered on Wednesday. So anybody that wants to come in and look at the I, I've heard three tractor trailers uh, full of equipment that will be delivered to the elementary school on the first day of school. So that should be <laughs> exciting. But really the completion of this project, our hope is to 
really just be able to have a playground that's accessible for all students and all children, all community members. Um, I can speak from experience that the wood chips, hi, <laughs> the wood chips. Um, hi, Nora. Hi, everybody. Everybody excited for school? Yeah. I heard yes. your voice. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no problem. We're excited. We're getting the school ready for you guys on Wednesday. We can't wait to see you. So the playground itself really, um, you know, to be able to complete this project to the way that we want it to look aesthetically for the town, but also for accessibility, wood chips, um, you know, it, they might be cheaper, but not in the long run. We're supposed to be digging up those wood chips every three years um, mm -hmm. and replacing them. The cost of everything has gone up. And so fiscally, it would be more responsible of us to use funding for the rubber matting. Um, I just think that that's really where we we should go with this project. Um, we really appreciate you looking at our application, considering um, offering us the funds to be able to complete this project to the way that we know we would like it to be for all of our community members and our and our children. Thank you, Andy Morris Friedman. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, two two quick things. I just want to thank people for coming to the committee to support this project and hope that you'll all come to town meeting uh, and drag a couple more people to help uh, vote yes for this project. Um, just to piggyback on what Mary said, it might help uh, diffuse some of the sticker shock that town meeting will definitely experience with this project. Um, if you had how much other options would cost, like Oh, pressure treated wood is eight hundred and seventy five thousand uh, dollars. You know, just grass is two hundred and twenty five thousand um, dollars. This option is and uh, just so people have an idea of how much things cost these days. Um, uh, it, it's going to be a real shock to people to know that a play you can't build a playground for under six hundred thousand dollars these days. But that's, you know, have you bought eggs lately? That's what I would say. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I do want to share. Um, we have this. Our CPA committee belongs to a state coalition um, for CPA for the Community Preservation Act, and they're professional. You know, they're people that have worked on this since the CPA started in two thousand and four time, um, and we rely on them for expertise and for ideas and for. Um, just helping us look at what we need to do. Um, so I did put, I did send them a copy of your application because um, part of it was the price tag, just, you know, seeing what their thoughts were. And, and I, I'm going to just read the response. Um, again, Hadley is not every town and city. So some of the things he says, I don't feel personally apply. I don't want people listening to be like, oh no, you know, because, um, but it's, but it's also, he looks at things very um, unbiased and, and has some good points. So um, I just want to read what he said. He said, from a CPA allowable uses perspective, there's no issue um, with a playground project described in, our, in the email. All playgrounds need a ground cover. So any cover you choose, including port in place, is consistent with rehabilitation of a recreational asset. And that's the CPA really has two functions. One is is the project allowed under the CPA Act, the Community Preservation Act? Um, so, you know, we, we felt it was, it's, it's recreation, but, um, you know, he verified that as well. Um, but we do note that this project is on school property. So your CPC should have a robust discussion about spending CPA funds to supplement the school budget. One of the issues often cited is that the public voted for the CPA projects for the entire community that the entire community can benefit from. School budgets often take up more than half a municipal budget, and certainly no one was thinking they were voting to increase school funding when they cast a yes ballot for CPA. So some towns are reluctant to use CPA, instead asking that general municipal funds or bond plus private fundraising pay for improvements. We have seen a few issues with CPA funds that have been spent on recreational assets under control of the school department. For example, Gloucester used CPA funds four times between 2013 and 2017, clo totaling close to 200,000 to rehabilitate Matos Field, 
and that site is soon to be used by the city for a new school. A similar project using 500,000 in CPA funds was undertaken in East Hampton, and then a school was built on that field. Some towns have most definitely decided about school projects are worth funding, and despite the issues cited above, we've seen lots of successful projects. One thing that can help if, is if there's a written agreement between the CPC or select board and the school committee that stipulates the amount of time that the community can access the recreational facilities. If CPA funds are used on a school project, the community at large should have some access to the property outside of school hours. And another thing that can help is for that agreement to specify that any CPA funds spent on a school project will be returned to the CPA fund if the land is subsequently used for non-recreational purposes. The CPC might want to discuss a policy on this issue. The first thing is to look at your CPA plan and see if school projects are something that fits with the priorities and goals set by the Community Preservation Committee. If the plan doesn't address school projects, you might want to amend it once you've had a policy discussion on the idea. So again, it's it's good out. It's good broader thinking. It's good, you know. And we certainly, of the almost eight million dollars that have been put into the CPA fund, now you know about two and a half million of it has gone for school projects. <laughs> so Hadley has been very supportive of the school projects. And um, but I did want to share, you know, what he said. Um, it's certainly some, you know, some things to think about. But um, it's, I'll just state the obvious, which is what we said last year about the the Hopkins fields, is that they are available and you know, and not just available, they're used by the community after hours. Yeah. I responded and said, we've got, you know, six it's a town of five thousand with six hundred plus in the whole school system and and it's very much a community community space when school's not in session. Um, which is but I certainly appreciate his professionalism and and um, and knowledge. Any Dr. Other McKenzie, questions? Dr. McKenzie has her hand up. Oh, thank you. Why aren't I seeing all that? That's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, again. I want to echo the appreciation for Tara, for Karina, for Melissa, all of the people that are representing various organizations, and all of the parents and faculty that have shown up in support of this product uh, project in Hadley Residence. Uh, thank you, Ms. Dowd, for your leadership on this. And thank you to the CPA, the committee, for listening to us. I just wanted to, I know that, that what you just read wasn't speaking specifically about Hadley, but I think it's helpful to clarify, although in the majority of towns, the school department budget comprises over 50% of total expenses. In Hadley, actually, in FY23, which you can't, the most recent data, because this is dependent on end of year reports, FY23 is probably the most recent available right now. The school department was 37% of total operating expenses, and that's decreased from 44% in FY18. So I just wanted to clarify if the public is listening, what percentage of total operating expenses Hadley Public Schools comprises of the total town budget. And as has already been mentioned, um, not only the Hopkins Fields, but several people here, uh, someone said, my children didn't attend the schools, but we played there. So the, the playground, the fields at Hopkins, these areas are available to the public outside of the 180 days in which school students are at school and the six and a half hours that they're out school at school. Outside of that, um, these properties are regularly used by the public. Very much community, which is great. Thank you. Any other comments um, or questions in the meantime? Yeah, do you think you can promise us that you won't tear down the playground and build another school there? <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping Hopkins, so I think that I, is something. Yeah, okay, thank you, Tara. <laughs> yes. We're not, we, we don't, um, we, that's not really on the horizon. I don't think any new bill. Oh. Of course, that's up to the community, but not anything we're talking about. Well, I feel very, I feel very strongly that the school budget should be used for educating the students. And if we can use CPA to get the state to pay for half of the floor, instead of the town paying for all of it, we should do it. That's a good perspective. 
and keep that in mind for our vote next month, Andy. Um, anyone else from the school want to say anything? I don't want to not give someone a chance if they'd like to. Um, I, I have a thank you all very much. It's great to have you all here. It's the biggest meeting I think we've had in a while <laughs> in terms of attendance. And, and it's great to see you all. And this is very exciting. Um, I have a quick question for um, Dr. McKenzie and for Chris on the Hopkins fields. Just we're going to be discussing the borrowing in a little bit. And I we have we can borrow so far about 554,000 has been paid out out of the um, borrowing. Um, so my question is, are you, at this point, do you feel like you're gonna be spending all, all the money that's been allowed or um, do you think it might be not quite, uh, just to give us an idea. And you may not know exactly at this point what the final total is, or if it's gonna be over, funds have to come from somewhere else. But I just wondered if there was a sense so far of, there's about 200 and some thousand left to, to be able to spend out of what was awarded. So I just was curious. Yes. yes, I, yes, I, yes I'm sorry. Sorry. sorry, sorry. <laughs> My wife is on her device right with us and it's, it's not working out very well. Um, I would expect that we would use the full amount. We're actually holding back on, on some payments right now. We're having some difficulty getting the grass to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and we just had UMass come in and they're doing a soil analysis um, to see if there might be disease in the soil. And so until that gets resolved, we're holding off on payments uh, to the mm -hmm. field. So there seems to be a lull in, in the balance changing at all. And that's really because of this reason. Um, we're just having a struggle with the grass right now. And, you know, there will be no further Okay, great. Thank you. Just wanted a just off the cuff ballpark, you know. Yeah, that's that's helpful. helpful. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Well, thank you very much to everyone here for the school project, and um, we'll look forward to seeing some or all of you on September sixteenth. Um, and you're again, you're welcome to stay, or you're welcome to to leave, whichever whichever you'd like to do. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. All right. Um, okay. Well, this is down to a much smaller group. Um, we're just missing Ray from our committee, and we're we usually take a break in, but I want to get don't want to make Carolyn wait through a five minute break. So, Carolyn, would you like to um, talk about the Goodwin funds and and what you're envisioning, and anything else you'd like to tell us? <laughs> okay. Um, so I. In the, in the intent of really um, continuing to keep the historical significance in the ownership of um, Goodwin and Town Hall, obviously those are town buildings, they're gonna stay. Um, just to give a little bit of backstory, and I'm glad Andy's here in case I forget any details of when you first funded the Goodwin, um, really it was updating utilities and putting up some space for conference, a conference room and planning. I think there was a couple other departments there um, mm -hmm. that was, Unfortunately, right before COVID hit, and because of that, the money that was allocated um, after all of the increases in supplies and services, and, and then just the delay of working, trying to work through COVID with, the, with the, um, the architect and getting people to come and meet in person, it delayed it enough so that at this point, I don't think it's anybody's surprise, there's not enough money. We did go out to bid to just do the electrical, and it still wasn't enough. So what, I, what the town is interested in doing is um, looking at the growth just since the last study. I, there was a space needs study, I think, back in 2014. And again, I'll, I'll ask after I finish, if Andy wants to plug in any of those holes, he can. Um, is uh, you've, you've, the town has actually gotten more staff, probably if, since we counted, it was about eight more um, employees. And departments have become more robust. We have Kayla as the land use coordinator serving several departments. Uh, we have a conference room that really has is still working in the town hall as a storage unit. Um, 
And so uh, we have an, you know, the HR director positions and another, there's an assistant in the HR. So it's been growing, but the space has been stayed the same. So the intent is to, to ask uh, CPA to take that money that is in the good win um, and do a complete space needs study for all of the municipal um, departments that uh, really were originally, com- you know, the good one was going to have a breakdown and then the town hall, who's, ever, who's already in that space that's getting very probably inefficient and cramped and in, um, having a professional come in to take a look at what our space needs are and our staffing and our projection of additional staff to see if the Goodwin in the town hall could be one study to look at what is the most efficient way to break up those departments and what would it what would it cost i think we're all finding i know people get so frustrated with studies and designs and i like and everything like that but you can't, you can't get to the next step and we don't want to let those buildings um get it deteriorate certainly so i think this is just looking to see if how to use these two buildings the most efficient and then and then prepare in the future a path to get there. So um, I, I think uh, we it just it's so beautiful, the center of Hadley and those to, two buildings are just gorgeous. And I, I think it's unanimous from what I can hear is those they want to maintain those buildings and use them as efficiently as possible. So this is a request the select board support it um, to get a study to do using the funds from the Goodwin to do a space study. I did check with town council to see if it was under the true intent of the authorization at town meeting and town council felt it was. Um, I'd like to read what the article 20 was in back in 2020. Um, and just want to say welcome to Ray. I see he's joined us. So I'm glad you're here. Yeah, sorry about that. I, <laughs> I've been battling like the last 45 minutes trying to get my microphone working. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, well, glad you glad you've been participating. Thank you. Yeah. Um, sorry about that, folks. No, that's fine. Article 20: To see if the town will vote to transfer $226,093 from the Community Preservation Act General Fund to the Hadley Select Board for the renovation and conversion of the Goodwin Memorial Library building into town offices and all incidental and related expenses for historic preservation purposes, said expenditure to be conducted within two years um, or returned. And it was, so that would have been 2022 and it was extended for two more years. Um, so it was up actually in June of 2024. And we had at the time said, well, we'll just let it run out. There wasn't anything happening. so. Carolyn has said, as is asking if we can. Um, there's, and then there was twenty. There was twenty five thousand to conduct a study for um, an elevator to put it in the Goodwin till too. So um, right now there is um, two hundred two hundred and two thousand plus the twenty five, so about two hundred and twenty seven thousand. So part of the thought is, can this be, so the questions are, can this be extended? We'd have to extend this at town hall again, a town meeting. Um, and do we feel comfortable saying, yes, it's still within this purpose of using, rehabilitating the building to be able to use it for town offices. So the original intent was to actually do the work so that at the end of the project, it was ready to go. Now, now the intent is to figure out what is needed to be able to then put out a bid CPA or townwise or however to pay historical funds um, to pay for actually making it work. So the end result is very different. The, the original end result would have been it's ready to move into the now it's going to be we now know what we need to do and what bid we need to put out. So I think that's that's part of where a difference is, but it's still getting it to spend funds on figuring out how to make it usable for town. Or do or do we ask the select board and town administrator to um, put in a, a brand new bid that's not using these funds? So I think that's that's kind of the decision to um, to be made. Um, Andy Morris Friedman. Uh, 
Carolyn, can you give us a quick rundown on what the money that was already spent was spent on? Oh, you're muted. Oops, you're muted. Yeah. I have to always do that at every meeting. Um, the they are the the only money that's been fun spent is the money for the architect. And a lot of that was to ask, keep asking them questions so that to try to put out the bid, right? And, and Yeah, we had a lot of difficulty with the bid as far as um, just the timing during COVID as well as um, the original estimates just weren't even close to what it ended up. It, each year it's just gone up in it's such large amounts. Sure, sure. Um, of, uh, I know the numbers are swimming in my head. Of the, what did you say, Mary, 200 and... Here, let, me, let me share the share the screen here. How, how much of that money do you think you're going to need to conduct the study? So, you know, I guess the questions I was was asking, um, uh, you know, Gary and other people who have been involved with some of these projects that we're trying to get funded is it's so hard to get a clear estimate. I can't, I can't, I think for just the space needs, they're not gonna be doing, they'll do a very basic design, but to just figure out the space need and where you should be putting departments, is there, is there make better sense to put the finance team, those departments that do just finance in one building, um, making it more efficient in another building. You know, these are just all the, the what ifs or what does it look like? Um, I, I do not think, but I, again, it, I'm so gun shy making these estimates because I hear from uh, contractors and I hear from architects and they'll say, yeah, you've got, this is, this is going to be much like what would be less than a hundred thousand. I, I am too nervous to uh, say that it would be where exactly it would land. It would not be 227,000. Um, what, what advantages are there for you if we listen to the attorney and just let you use the money that's been approved as opposed to returning the money that's left over and giving you a new project specific to these needs that town meeting would pass? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. I, I think the advantage to the town, but I, I can I think that's just a really that's probably really why I'm presenting it in this way to get all of your input. Um, cause it is your, it's your tax dollars that are paying for it. I, my concern is that it will sit and that it will stall if we, if there isn't some movement to move forward. Um, and I do think that it's wise to look at the needs now, the needs that were before, and then the needs, you know, forecasting the growth in the town, um, to look at all of the municipal space that you have and, um, just remember Russell School, there are some really exciting options that the designer and that team is going to be coming up with. And that could, one of those options um, could include having some municipal space over there as well. But I think that it's, that's going to be a little bit harder, um, I think, to, to have that, that, that building because it has so much you know, structural needs for it to make it a municipal building. Um, I think having these two buildings right near each other like this, and um, it, I'm told over and over again that structurally these two buildings are very sound. So I guess it's focusing on the most uh, the most room for success. Uh, so it's it's really it's going to be important to have all your feedback as well as what you think the pros and cons. I just I just I, my concern is if we stop and give the money back, it could stall. And I hate to see either of those buildings um, start to, de you know, deteriorate. Indy Klopacki. Hi, thanks. Uh, sorry if I missed this number earlier. And, and I know Andy Morris Friedman was asking the question, how much of the money that's already been allocated are you gonna need? I guess my question is, is the study- Andy, we've lost your audio. No, we've lost you. Are you, am I, can you hear me? I can yes. hear you. I can still hear him, Andy. Okay. Um, so how much of the, do you think the study is going to cost? I mean, uh, uh, obviously um, timing is, as you say, we're, we're concerned about installing this project got started in 
2016. Um, and there are a lot of needs in the Goodwin building that are going to push the envelope a little bit, like an ele elevator and vertical circulation. Uh, and that's a really uh, a constrained site. So, um, you know, it may, your horizons may have to go beyond just uh, just good one. But, um, but in any event, you know, would that, is the study going to, you said, you said it's going to consume all the money that's uh, already I, been I allocated? don't think it's going to. Um, I, I was just saying I'm gun shy to give an estimate, not being a contractor or a designer. But for those that I've spoken to in the, in the municipal environment who's who's done some of these types of studies, it's no, it wouldn't be anywhere near 227. All right, so we don't have an idea of what the study, the space study itself would cost. No, I don't have that. Okay. I don't have can an exact ask, number. Can we ask for an RFP? Oh, we would definitely do an RFP. And, and, and start from there and say, okay, listen, folks, you know, send it out to a bunch, you know, your architects, whoever, engineers, and I say, can't. okay, listen, yeah. this is what we want to design. This is what we want. And we want a, a comprehensive study and let them come back with what they're gonna give us and how much it's gonna cost. I can't do an RFP unless money's been authorized by the town to pay. You can't just, just to get a quote. I can I can make those phone calls and I did have conversations with other town administrators and um, one or two of the designers that we work with now. Um, it's, it's, it's very difficult to get a quote, especially now uh, without having that RFP yeah. in place and we can't do you're not yeah, and we're, and we're, and, yeah and we're talking strictly just the study here we're, we're not talking the construction this is just a space study a space Correct. for, for yeah. municipal space yes Courtney I know it's not apples to apples but the feasibility study for the Russell School um, I know it wasn't specifically a space study but that was about 40,000 is that right mm -hmm. yeah okay I, I think it's closer to that, Courtney, than it's going to be. Yeah, even a hundred thousand. I just again, I'm I'm gun shy. <laughs> it's it's crazy there. there. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if we're we're uh, necessarily behind a blank check on this. I think is part of the the, the question here, uh, or, yeah, or even a two hundred and twenty thousand dollar check, uh, or whatever the number truly is. So yeah, and, you know, and I think people are going to want to know really what yeah. what we're looking. Agreed. I can, and I understand that. Absolutely. I can, um, let me see what I can do in the next couple weeks. Um, I can see, um, let me see what's out there with that town administrators or managers who recently had a space needs study and I'll reach out to the contractor to see if I can get you guys some numbers. Okay. Um, Mark Dunn. Um, I guess my question is more to maybe Andy Morse Friedman, do you think um, Stuart would give us a quick read on this? I mean, I'm thinking that the cleanest legal thing is to not let, we gave them the town approved 200 and something for a specific scope. And this is related, but not the same. And we could be subject to, you know, a complaint filing or something like that about taxpayer money and how it's being spent. There could be someone opposed to that study and whatever. I mean, it seems like the cleanest thing to do would be to take that back and, and uh, award a study. And I guess I was asking AMF, do you have any thoughts on or any experience with how Stuart might advise us? Well, they don't give legal advice. Um, all their emails say that. Mm. Um, but we could definitely ask him. Although, uh, um, if we're done with questions and we're on to comments. Um, go yeah. ahead, Lin Linda. I, I, Carolyn said earlier on, we did consult. Uh, she did consult town council with the article and whether it was within the scope. Isn't that right, Carolyn? So, yes. I mean, we have a legal opinion. Um, and I'm not sure whether it was whether the attorney said to come back to CPA, but we certainly would uh, want to proceed. And um, that's which is why Carolyn was coming and trying to get the your approval. But I think that and, and my instinct, too, in reading it is like, well, you know, you're this is what we are. We're, it's still in the spirit of the article. But um, 
it was important to get town council's opinion and then certainly to get your approval. But as Carolyn says, you know, the options are yours. I think I think the you, spirit Linda. of the article is is a key thing of it. Will people feel we're we're going beyond what was voted on town meeting four years ago, or is this you know a good use? One thing is because it's expired, it would have to ask. We would have to ask if we went ahead recommending this. We would have to ask for an extension at town meeting. So there would still most likely be a discussion about it. So people would have a chance to weigh in at that point that are at town meeting. It's not just, oh yeah, here you go, because it has expired. So um, expired in June. So we would have to ask for that extension. Um, well, but I wouldn't want people to feel we're, we're not sticking with what we should be doing either. Um, so it, one question I have for Carolyn is um, who would be if this passes at town meeting, who would be carrying it forward? I mean, is there really going to be, um, is much time going to be lost between carrying this forward or starting a new project that would be approved next May? Um, so I guess that leads me into <laughs> something <laughs> if everybody doesn't know yet. Um, I am, I, I, I certainly think that that's the, the town administrator is a point person and the DPW, whether it's Scott or whether it's Gary, who's in, who's in charge of maintenance, should be provide that oversight for procurement purposes and also for just the building the oversight. Um, but I, I did send, uh, Mary knows this, but I did send all of the, and I, I think Mark does too, that um, I sent a notice out that um, uh, just due to some health concerns and um, I'm gonna be taking a met some medical leave um, effective September 9th, and then I'll be uh, um, retiring. So it won't be me, which is so frustrating because this is, you know, I was really excited about this, but um, it's time to take care of some things. And um, so it would be the, it would be, you know, the town admitted whoever replaces me or the interim is going to take on these projects. And so that would be absolutely the intent would be it would be in the, that would that's who would be doing the oversight especially for procurement purposes and for con, con, following contracts andy morris friedman well carolyn i hope uh, your uh challenges resolve um uh, easily and um and we're going to miss you uh in town hall for sure mm -hmm. thank you so uh so yeah. I'm still going to congratulate you on your retirement, <laughs> even though it might not be the way you originally uh, anticipated. Right, right. Yeah. Um, thank you. Per personally, I would feel better with a a clean project, um, but we could still have it ready for this coming town meeting, and you know, vote vote on it in two weeks, um, to return the two hundred and thirty eight. And to do a new project for whatever you think your best estimate is, ninety-five thousand, a hundred thousand, you know, with the promise that you'd return anything that mm -hmm. was left over, uh, and then there'd be, uh, you know, a discussion and go to town meeting, and uh, it would go through, and then you wouldn't lose any time. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the solution that I would feel most comfortable with. I guess the, the my second option would be to return 123,000 and leave 100,000. And the return would be done in the consent, consent agenda, which usually people don't even read, let alone comment on the town meeting. But that would be my second choice. Andy Klopacki? Um, it's, it's certainly an opportunity here to get creative solutions. However, I do think that time is a factor because by the time this gets approved in October, um, we will have lost, you know, a good uh, an opportunity at getting this done this year, uh, calendar year. Um, so I I think that you know we just have to weigh that in. If there is a possibility, if you're going to lay the keep the money there, this could. If they were to go out to bid faster uh and get that done quicker that's if you support the initiative versus um the cleaner of, of clawback and reapplicant. 
I think there's very likely possibility that it wouldn't get done this year, even if it was, you know, funds available now, just because it'll be, I'm not sure this will be the priority for the select board or, or, you know, with Carolyn not there, um, it may take a few months okay. to get to that and, point anyway. And, and, and we would have to go to town uh, meeting regardless, just, just even to renew this. Right. Right. So why wouldn't we just, I, I think, I, I think you guys have, have the right idea. I think Andy, Mark, you know, and Andy, uh, yeah, I, you know, just uh, re-identify this as study money instead of the full construction. So Ray, you're saying. I'm saying, I'm saying. A new project. You know, take, take back, take back, you know, the, the pre previously approved money set up and just set it up where, where we're uh, funding the study. I think the thought that I was having was, was, could we be criticized? Would would we be as understanding if it were the Congo Church V one, or someone's historical barn? If the if you know, I get it that town councils you know said it was w within the spirit, but could we you know would we be that? understanding uh, with, with an outside private um, interest. And then we, if not, we could be being capricious. No, I think um, uh, town government and the select board deserve special consideration um, and that we should do what we need to do to cooperate and work with them. Um, and that's why we made these suggestions because we think it's best. If you think that the, the couple of, I don't know how many weeks between now and town meeting, if that lag is uh, threatening the project, then we'll work with you to speed up the timeline. So, Carolyn, is there no. someone that could put together a simple application um, to send to me and we vote on it at our next meeting? Um, oh yeah, I, I think, can do that. I think that would be very clean. Um, I, I think yeah, it would just be. So let me let me do that. Let me just get some of those numbers, and then you know, I'll get. I'll tell you who I contacted. Who so, sometimes it's always hard to get people to contact, right. you know, reach out. Right. Um, I know there's firms out there because I've I've lived through them in other communities. Um, so let me see if I can do some digging. Um, and try well, to get the, some idea of the of the funding. The people that are doing the Russell School study are they? Is this outside of what they do? Yeah, that's they're more architectural and um, yeah, they're not going to. There's a little niche for municipalities and how they greet the public and how office space is more efficient. Um, and that's my experience, having been through two of them is it's a firm that comes in, they know exactly what the collector's office is, and that's more in, in line with the finance team and the finance departments are together here, maybe with one receptionist versus, so there's this whole concept and they look at the the, the, the biggest real estate for municipalities is storage. And we, we are in trouble with storage, another concern I have. Um, and I just think you're gonna be doing this eventually in some way with both buildings. Right. And does it make sense at the same time what's the most efficient, where are you going to get the most money for, for what you need if you're not doing it separately, but you're doing it together? Because it may, may make more sense to have land use, for an example. And I'm not saying this, so I don't want to get anyone to say, I'm not going over that building. Or I want to stay here. But land use, you should have, you know, community preservation should have their files with Kayla, with planning in one, in one building, in one area, um, have the finance team again collectors, assessors, uh, treasurer in one in one area in either building. So it's just being more efficient in the use of the public and in access to the public, I think. So we get the report done. Is the report has this use space, but it's not how to get there, right? Then do you have another, you have to have somebody do a plan for what needs to be done to change the buildings or is that part of this as well? 
Yeah, for this, for this, your, I didn't hear your first, the first part of it, Mary. You're, you're meaning for what we're talking about now. Yeah. Uh, no, there'd, there'd be another step you'd have to get. Um, right. To, to do this, you know, we're looking and it's so overwhelming because you have DPW, we ha you have these other big ticket items. Right. I think the important thing is that we just keep moving forward and making okay. sure nothing's just sitting. Um, so you would have to get an architect. I am guessing to renovate that building, um, you're, you're, you're probably going to need an OPM. You're going to need an architect. So it's just changed. Once the scope of work goes up in price, which it has now because of inflation and everything, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're looking at a project that, that it would be, and if, especially if you did it with the town hall and the Goodwin at the same time, but you wouldn't have to. You, you can phase those two things in. Um, mm -hmm. But that, that architect, um, I think you'd want that person involved with both buildings. I, it really... In my opinion, this is just my opinion. It should it should be one project, but that's that has lots of room for discussion, especially with having limited resources financially. Phased approaches are also a, a good um, option as well. So I'm kind of going way down the road. Yeah. But my intent yeah. here is just to do what's most efficient with what funds you have, and to continue to continue to move those projects forward. Okay. Well, that would be great if I mean that if other people agree, I think putting together an application for a, a clean, fresh, you know, start with this um, and, you know, who will be standing up at town meeting promoting it and, and um, you know, who will be the contact on it um, will be great. And any other comments on this particular mark? Yeah, just a question to, I, I guess, Carolyn, is um, this is completely divorced from uh, the NBC, right? D d does the NBC even exist anymore? It does not. Okay. That's the, the Municipal Building Committee. Yeah. All right. And those are the ones that came up with the original 226. That was, that was David uh, Tudrin's committee, right? Right. He was here. He's on the application. Yeah. And, and that was a, Nixon. Yeah, that was a pretty sketchy proposal to begin with. I mean, we really didn't know what we were getting. It wasn't really planned sufficiently, in my opinion. Um, and we were just kind of trusting them and going on faith that it was going to work out. And so I'm glad this is one CPA project that didn't get off the ground. Because uh, it's you really, the really yeah. we really have to plan things these days very carefully mm -hmm. in order for them to succeed. Where did that two hundred thousand dollar estimate come from, or two twenty, whatever it came? Well, where did that estimate come from? Was it from an uh, architecture firm, or they made it up? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there was there was there well, was an there, there there happened to be an architect, uh, Larry Tuttle, that was involved. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. He was he was on retainer at the time uh, for the town. The fifty thousand dollars that were allocated, and, and oh, you see his name is the application. Okay, Carolyn, before you go, um, there's some other CPA projects that you've been the, uh, one of the main forces behind. And if we can just get a quick update, if you don't mind, on sure. the Hockenham fence, on the Russell yep. School study, on the town columns, and on the exterior study for town hall yeah okay i'll do the yeah so if i forget one just remind me um yeah. hockenham um i'm sure it's very visible that everyone can see that it's not where it land it should land so we did meet with the two attorneys our attorney and with the attorney from um the company that is working on that um and the two attorneys were to go back and our attorney town council was going to present what was needed to get that completed so that that those uh those i'm not calling the granite uh poles oh, yeah whatever they're um would get evened out and graded properly and some other items that hadn't gotten done yet and uh so far that i reached out to our attorney she has not heard back from their attorney so that's it's 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 uh it's not where we want it to be uh I we're probably going to have to do a little bit more pushing from the attorney. Um, but I, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, keep, uh, I'll make sure that you are updated with that, but it's, it's been a disappointment and it's much slower than it happened, but yeah. 
Uh, let's see. The columns are done. Uh, all that stuff will get taken away as soon as I think uh, I think DPW plans on putting a new railing up because that railing got broken in the, in the construction. Um, Russell School, I it's been it seems quiet to everyone, but there's been a lot of work done um, with AHF and Allegroni. And we did get our first, I shared it with the select board, their first uh, draft of, if you remember the four options they were looking at, and I'm hoping to remember them all, it was stabilization, private and public use, private use, and um, so. collaboration, there was a collaboration, and, and demolition. Mm -hmm. So uh, this company has, uh, they've, they've gone into some really good areas that I wouldn't have thought of. And they kind of just wanted to give a bullet, and this is what they're going to be starting to get some public comment on. That, that should be happening in the next month or two. Great. And then uh, we also have an entity, a local entity, that is, is very interested about the possibilities of what could be done there. And there's going to be a meeting between that entity, uh, Jake Sanders, who is our point person at AHF. Uh, Molly will be there, and um, I will be there. We'll be doing that, in, I think, next week. Um, just to get them introduced and to see if any of those ideas could be could bubble up to something. So I'm I'm happy with it with that progress of what they're doing behind the scenes that we just don't see. And let's see what's the, what was what's the study I mean, on the exterior of. Um, yep, those contracts have all been. Um, I think they all got sent out this week, so they'll be starting. We, we're doing oh, great. Two, we're doing a 3D. This is your your layman's term here. A 3D. Um, scan of the building and which will help a lot and then we'll have the <clears throat> engineer and consultants present get get a true scope of work um, to take a look at that I was really disappointed I had written a grant for the windows which were are estimated to be about a hundred thousand but we didn't get it mm -hmm. so I was really disappointed about that but um, yeah. yeah so that's where that is right now so they'll uh, once those contracts are signed I would say in the next month or two they'll start their work Wonderful. Thank you so much for You're welcome. the update and all the work you've done to get those to that point. Courtney has a question. I'm so sorry. I just got kicked off for the Russell School update. Oh, no. <laughs> I, you did, wanna, you I missed did the whole too. One. <laughs> I just missed like something's bubbling up and somebody's going to meet with somebody. And then I, yeah. <laughs> It's Courtney, do you want to touch base tomorrow? So sure, that'd be great. Yeah, Thank you. Just reach out to because I'll forget by tomorrow. So okay. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thanks. Yeah. Very good. Well, I I echo Andy and so appreciative of all you've done for the town, Carolyn, and so helpful to me. And and it's been a pleasure to work with you and wish you the best. And Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. I that well. Okay, well, we will we'll look for your your somebody's application. I, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. I'll make, yeah. And um, I'll get that right out to everybody. And the nice thing is we have a couple weeks before the next meeting. So okay. um, So we'll do that. Um, well, I think she's uh, taking her leave a week before that, right? Right, yeah. So okay. it won't be you with the next. Hopefully somebody will be here to talk about it. Yeah. Um, but we will do that. Um, if Linda's okay, well, we're, we usually try to end by nine. So Andy, I think we'll just power through to nine at this point and, and then we'll do a bunch of stuff next meeting. I knew we wouldn't get through everything, but, um, um, I just, before we do Linda real quick, I want to just talk about the St. John's cause that affects our figures. Um, so Paul goes a of B1 Vodka had, you know, presented his application to us and it was, um, we had presented it at town meeting a year ago and um, somebody at town meeting changed the payback period from five years to 20 years. And so it was, Paul was not, he was out of the country at the time. He wasn't able to be at the meeting, but um, it that's how it got approved was with it. If he sells the building within 20 years, it would be, have to be paid back. Um, and he he was very disappointed with that and, and went through the figures and just felt that it really didn't make sense to accept the award. So he has withdrawn his application. Um, and I'm going to go back up and 
share the screen again with the treasurer's report. Oops, that's not what I wanted. So, um, I don't know if anyone else is having spe spectrum issues in town, but yeah, I got kicked off my Wi-Fi, so I'm I'm on cellular now. <laughs> okay, all right, we can still see you and hear you. This um, is my this is my third device I've tried. <laughs> oh boy, maybe it's time to go back to in person. We'll we'll see. <laughs> Um, I would so love to blame Spectrum, but I think it's just operator error here. <laughs> <laughs> Potential 2024 clawback. Um, so $125,400 was awarded for St. John's. The way it worked at the time was $65,50 came out of historic reserve and $118,850 out of the undesignated. So if we vote tonight to claw it back, um, here's our new balances. It's the same total, um, but there's less in reserved because that 125, 400 is no longer reserved. It's now put in available funds. So the historic reserve would go to 6550. The undesignated would go up to a million five ninety. Um, I checked with the town accountant and he said just a vote from the CPC is needed. This does not need to go before um town meeting. So I know it says 2024 STM, but he said just a vote from us would um, would be all that's needed. And at this point, I propose making the vote because um, they've withdrawn their application. Um, does someone want to make a motion to? A motion that we um, claw back the 125,400. Second. Okay. Who seconded? Um, right. Hey. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Andy Morris Friedman? Yeah, I just want to say um, I thought this was going to go down to defeat until that guy put the extent, the payback time to 20 years. And then people said, oh, well, 20 years, you know, I'll vote yes. And so it passed. And I thought he was putting me that amount of time. So it wouldn't pass. And I thought it was kind of ironic that he actually helped it pass. Um, but now I'm concerned that this will be something that people do to CPA proposals to try to scuttle them um, since he was opposed to it and he did this, put this poison pill on it. Um, and so I just hope that we don't get too many more of these extensions at town meeting. And, and hopefully our... Uh, applicants will be able to attend that meeting and speak in, you know, do those kinds of proposals. Yes. Well, not for sure. You know, the a community <coughs> like ours and many others spends all this time talking about what makes the most sense, what what works from all points of view. You know, we were work one working with Paul with what was reasonable. You know, we had lots of talk on it, and it's awfully hard to just have somebody that really hasn't been involved at all say, hey, I'd rather do this. And and um, it, it just barely passed. It just barely passed the 20 year, and it just barely passed. So I agree. It might not have passed at the five. What we did for the next one is we just we did have a five year payback for the Phelps farm. We just didn't even discuss that at town meeting because that's really more of something I guess our committee can set up. And if people ask about it, that's fine. But, um, you know, that's that's another way we kind of tried to make it so it wasn't such a, a discussion point because it is hard to have it change without a whole lot of information going into it. So, so maybe these kind of details will work are worked out in the uh, grant agreement exactly. and not in the warrant article. Right, and that's what we did. Um, all right. So, we any other discussion? Um, Kayla, can you do the roll call, please? Uh, Mary. Yes. Risa. Yes. Andy Morris Friedman. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Adam? Yes. Andy Klopaki? Yes. Mark? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Ray? 
Yes. You've got nine zero. Very good. All right, Linda, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I just, I still have the screen ahead. Um, so our cloud right. and then with our potential new projects, if that 292,000 is approved, um, again, this is just possibility. Um, that leaves us with zero in open space for 4,550 in historic reserve, the 308,000 still in housing. Um, so we have a million 379. We really have a million 879, but trying to keep that 500,000 available um, is where we're at right now. We're also going to have our first surcharge has been collected. Um, so we've got another 80,000 or so already added on to our fund total. And we'll be getting our state distribution in the fall, which hopefully will be about the 175,000. Um, that's always an unknown, um, but if we kind of conservatively hope it's about last year's. Um, uh, they don't. They don't think it's going to be as good as last year. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. They they tend to <laughs> take pretty good care of their small towns. Yeah. Um, but anyways, even without those funds, we have seven hundred and fifty thousand that Chris um, from. The school said they are spending the full amount. So, Linda, can you sort of take us through what our options are? Sure. It's now time to do something about this seven hundred fifty thousand. Andy Klepacki will be very happy. <laughs> right. The um the amount uh, the portion of that article that you designated to be paid, paid directly from the funds has already uh, been paid and it's out of there. And then. Um, much of the 750000 to be borrowed has already been spent. Um, as, as you heard from Chris, what hasn't actually been spent is, is committed, but they're waiting on a few things. So that's going to be spent. Um, Mary and I started talking earlier in the summer, um, especially with some of the projects that we had a number of larger projects under consideration at the time when we were first talking talking about bonding and one being the Russell School at that time. And um, oh, I can't remember what the other was. We had, we had a, a few other things and there was a benefit to doing the borrowing and spreading out a portion of these funds. And, and Mary asked about what if we just spend it now? What if we just spend the 750,000 out of the out of our balance instead of borrowing? Well, I did run that by bond council and a lesson learned. We voted to borrow it and now we have to borrow it. Um, but we don't have to borrow it over a long period of time. And in fact, I, I, I it was part of the borrowing in August on a, um, I piggybacked it because we knew, I knew we had to borrow it at some point. It, I piggybacked it on other things that had to be borrowed at that time. And uh, so your 750,000 has been borrowed and it is due at the end of October. So we just have it for like almost three months, I think about a 90 day borrowing. And um, at that time, you can then pay it in full and never do any more, uh, never be concerned about it again. The whole principal could come out of here. But you also have the option of uh, we paying some of it. Let's say you want to do over three years. That would be two fifty thousand a year plus interest. Uh, so I would pay off two fifty at that time and roll over of the principal and roll over the five hundred to to next year. Um, so it's just a matter of whether you want to take care of this. Um, as mentioned, you see there's three point one million dollars in the fund. Of that, you've uh, we have five hundred seventy two thousand is committed already. So I consider it that you have a balance of just over two and a half million, two million five forty nine thousand that has not been um, uh, is is not committed. So if you spent seven hundred fifty thousand of that, you would still have one million seven hundred and fifty thousand going forward, um, plus this year's income, uh, less this year's um, other articles that might pass. So um, I think. I also want to tell you what, what the interest rate is. We're finding on our bands, they're close to 5%. So 5% 5 on 750,000 roughly is um, is 37,500 or 3,000 a month. So 
if you decide you want to pay it out of your funds right now, you will have you'll just have had that short time of interest. If you roll it over, we will spending be spending an extra thirty seven thousand a year, the first year, and then to you know however long do you decide to pay it over. So, I um, I'm very flexible with the borrowing it's really a matter of your cash flow and what you're comfortable with parting with and whether you want this taken care of now and not in your plan anymore in 2020 when we were looking at this project yeah we we would have been that 500,000 that we were um trying not to dip into we would have dipped into we didn't have the right. We didn't have the available <laughs> funds to be able to do this million five hundred seventy six thousand, whatever close to that, um, right. for the field. So, and we did think there'd be, you know, yeah, Goodwin and, and Russell right down the pike. Um, I feel at this point the money's there. I'd rather not pay the interest on it. And if we do get a big project in the future, we have the chance to borrow again. It's it's we can borrow as many times as as we. I and even with the borrowing, even you know, five percent towns get a better deal than mortgage homeowners. Um, but sure. um, even at that, we can only borrow about two million. Uh, you know, the CPA is not the is not this huge money source for a project that's going to be ten million. Um, it can be a part of paying something, but it can't it can't fund a huge amount. So um, I, you know, I think even. With if we if we approve if the town meeting if we recommend and town meeting approves the two projects for two hundred ninety two thousand that we just heard about tonight and maybe we we this does not include clawing back the Goodwin so there's another two hundred and twenty six thousand um, and we might have another hundred thousand in projects if the, if Carolyn comes back asking for that so we're still going to be about a hundred thousand higher. Um, than what you see here. But if we pay back the borrowing, it drops us down to availability of 1442000 So we still have a very healthy um, amount. And um, our reserve would jump up to 929 because of this 292. Um, but the good one would come out. So it, again, this this report is good for one day. I, I swear, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's the way That's it works. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but but we still have a healthy a healthy balance. And to put it in perspective, now we've gotten about eight million total between what the state has paid and the town has put in over the twenty year period. We're now up to twenty years. Um, so to still have a million four forty two left after you know out of eight million after twenty years shows that you know we haven't um, we haven't been spending what we've been taking in most years. Um, things have gotten more expensive, so that million four doesn't go as far, but it's still there. So that's that's my thoughts on it. Other that's people? great. I'm in favor of paying off in October and only having paid the, what would that be, 9,000? Yeah. Uh, that's about right, yes. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Andy, Emma? Yeah. I yeah. As I recall our previous discussions about this, um, the reason to borrow is so you still have the money that you've saved. Um, so you, if you've got a 1.4 million and you borrow 750,000, you still have the 1.4 million. Whereas if you use the money you saved, then your balance goes down. And we thought there were gonna be other really big projects and right. we would need the money. These other big, big projects have not materialized for one reason or another. Um, so we save $35,000 a year in interest. Yeah, yeah. It, it made perfect sense at the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But conditions but, uh, change. You know, yeah. And right. so mm -hmm. you, re you respond to them. So uh, generally, you know, I love spending, but I hate borrowing. Uh, but I went, but I went along with it because everybody thought it was such a great idea, um, and now I'm ready to pay it off. I would agree. I I hate paying interest, especially at current rates. Yeah, I don't think it's something we need to pay. We 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 don't. We didn't get, as Andy said, we didn't get the other two. 
shoes to drop that we thought might. And we were positioning ourselves to support those. So why pay interest when those are still gathering steam? So We also didn't want to have a much smaller project come through. I mean, we were going to be less than 500,000 mm. total. Um, we didn't want a smaller, like an APR to come through and we would just wouldn't, you know, you don't, you don't borrow for 200,000. So we didn't want to mm. be caught not being able to fund even smaller things. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just. Um, Some of those things might come back for the spring too. You know, I think there was, there was a clock issue at the congregation church and a few other things. So, uh, you know, certainly it's a balancing act to hear how much yeah. do we want to pay off uh, interest uh, versus have funds available for projects. Yeah. And, but if the, if the sentiment is, you know, all or nothing, I don't know if there's some middle ground. Um, there's, there's but, certainly is middle ground. You can say, Pat, take half of it now and then we'll, uh, we would roll over the rest to be due a year from now. And uh, that would cut the interest in half. And so you could be doing it in two payments. So one, two, or or three. Um, each year, we're only paying interest on the outstanding balance. So it would go, the interest would be would be down. So um, what would that save you? If you did, if you want to pay half of it now, so then you'd have 375,000 that you would roll over with this interest then being 17,000. That gives you a little more flexibility of having an extra three hundred seventy-five thousand on hand if you felt that there was not anything uh, larger that that you wanted to make sure you held on to some money for. So that's probably about what we would get in a year, though, Mary. Uh, right, right. We got six hundred thousand uh -huh. last year. Right, five hundred little less than that the year before. I wanted to show, here's the list of projects that have been approved that have come out as CPA. And if you remember, we've been getting 500 to 600,000 the last couple of years added on each year. And we got 265,000 in 2020 um, ATM and there wasn't any in the fall because the meeting got cut short. And then in 2021, it was 212,000 and 215. So we had about 400 and 25, 27 between yeah. for 2021 in the year. And then, um, and I guess I should be doing fall and spring the way they, the fiscal year runs, but 199,000, here was our big 750 bonding. So it was still 750. So in 2022, we actually, for the first time in years, um, put out more than we had taken in just that year. And it was 93,000 and then um, 125 is what we're just climbed back. And then the 190,000. So going back to that other screen, um, you can, that's why, you know, it's built up because we have been taking in this much each year, um, 630, but we haven't been spending that much in projects. So to still be at a million four, historically, we should be in really good shape even paying that 750,000 um, until a big project comes through. And then we do have the option to bond again. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that, um, I, I mean, I I don't like paying interest either. And I uh, just want to make sure that, you know, we just had the discussion to say, yeah, we do this, we're going to bring our, our reserves down a bit, but, you know, based on what you're, you're showing here, uh, we're going to be taking in enough and we're not spending it as fast. And again, something brings yeah. If we wait another six months, we're paying, we're throwing 18,000 out the window for nothing. If it's, if it's not needed, I think that would be something we'd be accountable to the taxpayers for. Well, just just to throw another monkey wrench into it, though, when you're holding on to the money, you're also earning money. We we do get investment income off of the funds. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't think I don't think you, I worry about your being accountable back yeah. to the tax. I th think we're doing well with the money. Sherry, did you did you want to say something? I thought I saw Sherry's hand up. Um, no. Okay. Who else wanted to? 
Mary, did you want us to decide this tonight or do you want I, us to I think, think about it, it would, and do it next week? I would rather do it tonight just because we so appreciate Linda being here if there are for questions, but also it does help us know, you know, next week when we're voting exactly what we're voting on, because we'll change Adam we'll, and change this around to show um, the clawback and also the clawback of the Goodwin, um, which we can vote on next week. This next week month. Against, or next, I'm sorry, next meeting. Um, we can vote on that, weighing that against the application that Carolyn's putting in and decide, you know, how we want to move forward with the Goodwin. Um, but we can put in the potential and and show this coming, you know, coming out so that it's, and hopefully by then we'll get the next set of, these figures are through June 30th, which is the, you know, or late, the most recent figures we were able to get. So we may get it, we may get it through July 31st, which will show some of the surcharge paid for fiscal year 25. Um, so it'll be a little more up to date too, but it doesn't well, really affect our discussion because there's plenty of funds there. Well, I would like to make a motion then that we use, um, uh, that we pay off the bonding from the 750,000 uh, from, when was it, the 2022 project? Mm -hmm. 2000, right. Um, and I would add to your motion that it come out of the undesignated fund. Well, do we have to use the reserved fund first? We don't have to. And no, um, okay. Yes. Then, yes, I there's agree. There's only 4,550. I think it's just cleaner. Okay. Do so I move we pay it off in full. Do we? Second. I second. So now discussion. Do we, does Linda have any idea how the interest we're making on the money compares to the interest we're paying on the borrowing? If the borrowing's uh, what, 5%? Mm, boy, I, I wish, I don't have that with me. Okay. Um, and the, the borrowing uh, is known at 5%, the interest earned is not known. Yeah, right. That's variable. It oh. well, yes, it, it is variable. See, but that's um, but it's also the uh, growth, which is harder to quantify because we, it, because the money is invested. So it's not just what it pays each month; it's mm. whether we have growth on those funds. If you but, look back um, at our, it, it won't come out right away. Hmm? It won't come out until uh, because, as you said, not all of it has been spent. So it'll only come out as it's spent and the rest. And that's true, by the way, of all of your uh, commitments on the articles. We don't remove the money from the CPA um, account. I le we leave the money in, as invested under the CPA umbrella and, and then we transfer it out as it's spent. That way, CPA gets the benefit of the full amount, not just the net amount after commitments. Because there's because I can, because we can. And it uh, works out better for you. Yep, it does. And it's cleaner when there's money left over putting it back in. Yes, it's already there. <laughs> it's already there. Right, right. Any other thoughts or discussion? So that will drop our earnings on investments a little bit in the correct deck. And, and also reduce our ongoing interest payments. Yeah both right because usually it costs more to borrow than you get an interest from savings yeah if it was so all being banks done work yeah, yeah if it was all being done through the same bank but yeah right it's invested so it can easily go up and it can easily go down if you look right. at you know we this... were 29,000 then 11,000 last year minus 81,000 the year before mm -hmm. right you know it's it's up and down so yeah yeah it's kind of a tangent, Linda, but what is it invested in? Uh, I'd be happy to send you a statement. I don't, I don't have it. Up, okay. not, don't have it on the top okay. of my head. Um, do you want to see? You want a statement? Uh, well, I just oh, wondered. What I think kind it, it of would be interesting to see. I'd be, you know, I'd be very happy to have you all look it over. I think that that um, the more eyes, the better. Sure. sure. All right. No, I'll, yeah. I'll send you that. But uh, but Mary's right. It's that. It's that. 
it's that capital. I'm more, I'm more concerned about I'm, I'm the uh, the the growth or the loss versus. I mean, right now, you know, seven hundred fifty thousand is seven hundred fifty thousand, and that's what it's going to come out. And if we do have any losses, we have not had any losses at this point. So this year, too. this year, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I always say when I see these charts come up in the negatives, it's like ah. Oh, but um, but other years we have such nice growth. Over the over the course of the last <laughs> decade, it was definitely yeah. helpful. Yeah, we do. Um, and our and our fund balance helps the town's bond rating too. I mean, it's it's certainly a factor in there. Um, it's not a reason to vote yes or no on anything. It's just a nice side benefit that the town gets. Um, so, uh, any other comments, or can we go for a vote? Um, all right, Kayla. All right, roll, roll call vote. Mary, yes. Risa, yes. Andy Morris Friedman, yes. Sharon, yes. Adam, yes. Andy Kupaki, yes. Mark, yes. Diane, yes. And Ray, yep. All right, all in favor. Great, thank you. Who who seconded that? I, I heard a couple of voices. I wasn't quite sure. Andy Morris Friedman made the motion. Who was the second? I I did, but I don't know if anybody else chimed in. All right, thank you. All right, well, it's 914, so um everything else can wait till next <laughs> meeting, I think. Um, just a reminder that the next meeting is September 16th. One thing that we're going to hopefully discuss if there's time is um, there's a bylaw change committee that's been at work and, and there's some things that um, I think need to be updated in our bylaws. And I didn't want to send even more information out because um, I didn't think we'd have time to get to it this meeting anyway. So in the next few days, um, Kayla and Andy Morris Friedman and I have been working a little bit on and maybe somebody else. Um, have been working on looking at the changes and made some suggestions. So we'll send that out for everyone to take a look at so we can discuss it at our next meeting too. Uh, part of it is the state has changed some of its um, wording and its CPA Act, and that's pretty much been mirrored in Hadley's. And then some of it is just what's in practice. So um, you'll be seeing that coming from um, Kayla shortly. And um, I think everything else can wait. Our next meeting, September 16th, 7 p.m. Is everyone okay with still doing it by Zoom despite, despite technical difficulties? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. And thank you everyone so much for attending and especially Diane, who's having a lot more fun than I am these days, I think, living on a boat, but <laughs> Appreciate, appreciate everybody zooming in and, and attending and um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks.